Chapter 19 of The Adventures of Grandfather Frog. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kevin Davidson. The Adventures of Grandfather Frog by Thornton W. Burgess. Chapter 19 Grandfather Frog Jumps into More Trouble. Some people are heedless and run into trouble. Some people are stupid and walk into trouble. Grandfather Frog was both heedless and stupid and jumped into trouble. When Striped Chipmunk told him where the spring was, it seemed to him that he couldn't wait to reach it. You see, Grandfather Frog had spent all his life in the Smiling Pool, where he could get a drink whenever he wanted it just by reaching over the edge of his big green lily pad. Whenever he was too warm, all he had to do was say, Chugaroop, and dive headfirst into the cool water, so he wasn't used to going a long time without water. Jump, 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 Grandfather Frog was going as fast as ever he could in the direction Striped Chipmunk had pointed out. Every three or four jumps, he would stop for just a wee, wee bit of rest. Then off he would go again, jump, jump, jump. And each jump was a long one. Peter Rabbit certainly would have been envious if he could have seen those long jumps of Grandfather Frog. At last the ground began to grow damp. The farther he went, the damper it grew. Presently it became fairly wet, and there was a great deal of soft, cool, wet moss. How good did it feel to Grandfather Frog's poor, tired feet? "'Must be I'm almost there,' said Grandfather Frog to himself, as he scrambled up on a big mossy hummock so as to look around. Right away he saw a little path from the direction of the long lane. It led straight past the very hummock on which Grandfather Frog was sitting, and he noticed that where the ground was very soft and wet, old boards had been laid down. That puzzled Grandfather Frog a great deal. "'It's a sure enough path,' he said. "'But what, under the blue-blue sky, does anyone want to spoil it for by putting those boards there?' You see, Grandfather Frog likes the soft, wet mud, and he couldn't understand how anyone, even Farmer Brown's boy, could prefer a hard, dry path. Of course, he never had worn shoes himself, so he couldn't understand why anyone should want dry feet when one could just as well have wet ones. He was still puzzling over it when he heard a sound that made him nearly lose his balance and tumble off the hummock. It was a whistle, the whistle of Farmer Brown's boy. Grandfather Frog knew it right away because he had often heard it over by the smiling pool. The whistle came from over the long lane. Farmer's boy had had his dinner and was on his way back to look for Grandfather Frog where he had been dropped. Grandfather Frog actually grinned as he thought how surprised Farmer Brown's boy was going to be when he could find no trace of him. Suddenly the smile seemed to freeze on Grandfather Frog's face. That whistle was coming nearer. Farmer Brown's boy had left the long lane was coming along the little path. The truth is, he was coming for a drink at the spring, but Grandfather Frog didn't think of this. He was sure that in some way Farmer Brown's boy had found out which way he had gone and was coming after him. He crouched down as flat as he could on the big hummock and held his breath. Farmer Brown's boy went straight past. Just a few steps beyond, he stopped and knelt down. Peeping through the grass, Grandfather Frog saw him dip up beautiful clear water in an old cup and drink. Then Grandfather Frog knew just where the spring was. A few minutes later, Farmer Brown's boy passed again still whistling on his way to the long lane. Grandfather Frog waited only long enough to be sure that he had really gone. Then, with bigger jumps than ever, he started for the spring. A dozen long jumps, and he could see the water. Two more jumps, and then a long jump, and he landed in the spring with a splash. Chugarump! cried Grandfather Frog. 
how good the water feels and all the time grandfather frog had jumped straight into more trouble end of chapter 19 recording by kevin davidson www.blogordie.com